I'm going to share along the lines of all of our calls. Just, you know, because you know that every person in the body of Christ is called. Did you know that? Each one's called to what God's called them to. Each one has a passion. Hallelujah. You know, as a pastor, I used to wonder, you know, when we come to, even we'd have staff meetings or we'd come together and have leadership and team leaders and all that. And I'd say, well, how come everybody doesn't know everything? How come they don't know that we need to do this and this and this? Everybody's only concerned about what, what they're doing. How come everybody who wants to pray just wants to pray? Everybody who wants to go out just wants to go out. Everybody wants to do Bible study just wants to do Bible study. Don't they know that we have to get everybody together doing everything? And then I realized, wait a minute, I'm the pastor. I'm the one supposed to get everybody doing everything. And they're only supposed to do their thing. <laughs> Amen? And when you understand that, but see, one of the things that we mis- have a misconception of, and while I'm talking, turn to Romans chapter 11. And we're going to talk about you because we're going to get you to know that God wants to use you. It is a time of planting. It's a time of watering, but it's also a time of harvest. Yeah. Amen. And God wants us to reach as many as we can. God wants us to, to get into our place and to flourish where we're at. Amen. Yeah. And, and you need to understand some things, too, that, uh, you know, it, when you got born again, you stopped to be in common. Amen. A.W. Tozer said this, and I want to read this to you before I read the scripture to you. He said this. He said, let every man abide in the calling wherein he is called and in his work, and his work will be sacred or as sacred as anybody working in the ministry. It is not what a man does that determines whether his work is sacred or not, or his work is sacred or secular. He said, it is why he does it that makes it right. The motive is everything. So let a man sanctify the Lord God in his heart, and he can thereafter do no common act. Everything you do because you've been born again, because you're a new creature in Christ Jesus, no matter what you do, even in the natural, no matter what you're doing, hallelujah, it's not a common thing. It's an uncommon thing because you're anointed by the Holy Ghost to be around every person you're with. Amen? You know, I realized when I, you know, I, of course, I was born again as a child, and I got filled with the Holy Ghost. I went to, to Bible school and went to college, Bible college, and so doing things. And while I was doing that, I, I was working, you know, as building homes. I was working on, a, you know, as a framer and, and building houses and stuff. And in Oklahoma, you did everything. I mean, you built the house from the ground up. You didn't bring in roofers. You, you did it all. So we did everything. And uh, I had a nine-man crew. And those nine-man crew, every one of them were the most ungodly people you were ever around. I mean, you know, every other word was that word. And it was really bad. And so you had to take a spiritual bath every day after work. Okay. But I ministered to all those guys being there and doing things more than I even thought I did because I had to continually remind myself of who I was. Amen. Many times we look at things and we see things because we have a tendency to go, well, yeah, but I'm not the preacher. I'm not this or that's not what I'm called to do. But you are called to do something. You're called to be a Christian, number one. You're called to be a saint. Some of you, that's a struggle, but you're called to be a saint, okay? Okay. <laughs> You really are. Why is that so important? Because we look at Christianity as if it's something that we have. We look at being a Christian as something that's a part of our life. And and being Christ-like is not a part of your life. Being Christ-like is your life. Amen? And God's called each and every one of us to be a light to the world. He's called each and every one of us, hallelujah, to let our, shine, our light shine wherever he has planted us. Amen? Amen? Another minister said this. He said, we are all priests before God. There is no such distinction as secular or sacred. In fact, the opposite of sacred is not secular. The opposite of sacred is profane. So in short, no follower of Christ does secular work. I love it. 
Hallelujah. We all have a sacred calling. Amen. Why? Because we're called of God. It changes. Your new birth changes everything. The resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ changed everything. Amen. And so we want to talk about your calling this morning. Hallelujah. And don't worry, I'm a short-winded preacher. We'll be out on time. Hallelujah. We got this. And uh, so here in, in Romans chapter 11, we all know this verse, but I'm going to read it to you out of the New Living, and, but I'm, and I'm going to quote it to you out of the King James, and I'm going to read it to you out of the Amplified, because I love what it says. You know, the King James Version says, the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. Amen? The New Living Translations, for the gifts and, and His call can never be withdrawn. The Amplified Bible says this, for God's gifts and His call are irrevocable. He never withdraws them when once they are given. And he does not change his mind about those to whom he gives it. His grace or to whom he sends his call. Amen. And the funny thing about it is that I can, and I may do that. I've written down all these verses about, about what Paul said to him when he wrote to Romans, when he wrote to the Corinthians, when he wrote to all, he always, he called them the called. Did you know you're the called? God's called us. Called us to what? Called us to be Christians. Called us to be saints. Called us to be priests of our homes. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. I I, I love that because when you understand that you're called to be a Christian, it changes everything. Hallelujah. It changes what goes on. Hallelujah. Of what takes place. Amen? Job said it like this, and I'm going to read this to you out of the Amplified. This is Job 23, verses 12 through 14. It says, I have not gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed and treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. He is unchangeable, and who can can turn him? And And what he wants to do, that he does. He performs that which he has planned for me. And many such matters is mindful. How do you know that God has a plan and a purpose for your life? Now, we get all nervous about that because we think, oh, my God, he might call me to China. He might call me to Africa, you know. And, and here's the thing. I know God's called you to exactly where you're at. Did you know you're in the perfect will of God right now? And that we don't have time to run around and try to do things or to see things. We, have, we only have time to let God's light shine to those that are around us right now. We need to let the glory and the power of God and the joy of the Lord, which is our strength, change everything about us. Amen? Now, go with me, if you would, over to 1 Peter. Go over me with me, if you would, over to 1 Peter chapter 4. Y'all doing okay? I know. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, we know that we have lots of gated communities around us. That's why you can't get into. But we're going to go out there and find the folks that are ours. Do you know what I mean by that? Those that are just ours. Those that, are, those that we're going to go find our own. Hallelujah. Those that need. Those that were lost. Those that need to be rescued. Amen. Hallelujah. And if we just reach one, praise God, then that'll be awesome. Hallelujah. Thank God for just reaching one. Amen. Hallelujah. You have a heart for God. And it's not for everybody. Everybody gets nervous about that. Oh, God, would I do that? I mean, I found this out. I mean, I didn't, when I started out in ministry, uh, I heard a, a, an old minister at the time, as Peter said, this old lady who's 65. Woo! Yikes. Hey, hey, hey. Hallelujah. So, anyways. <laughs> amen. Amen. <laughs> but the key is this. Is that I heard an elderly minister, I should say, say this. He looked at me and he said, listen, God could care less where you start. Just start. And he said, and God could care less what you do. Just do. And when I heard that, I thought, okay, whatever they need, I'm going to do. Whatever there is, I'm going to do. Whatever there is, I'm just going to reach out and do. And, you know, that was the greatest thing I ever did. People ask me all the time, well, how did you get to do this? Or how did you get to do that? Or how did you get to be here? How did you get to that? I said, because I just showed up. 
you know. I was in a church at the time. I didn't know any. I was single at the time, so I was helping out, and they needed help in the nursery, so I went and helped in the nursery. The lady who actually was doing the nursery did all of the VHSs at that time and did all of the books for all of uh, uh, the Word of Faith churches and all of the uh, Pentecostal churches. She wrote all the curriculum for everybody nationwide. She just happened to be the head nursery worker there. So I got to learn from her. And then they said, hey, I need, we, need, we need a children's person here. So me and this other guy walked in and did children. We had 300 kids for three hours, me and him by ourselves. Hallelujah. It was exciting. <laughs> you know, we did it. We did it. We were just doing it. I was just doing He happened to be Gospel Bill, Willie George. He happened to be doing these things. And so we were just doing things. And then the usher said, hey, here we go. Let's be an usher. I said, okay, I'll be an usher. Let's do these things. So I was an usher. That happened to be Buddy Bell, who wrote all of the things, did all of the stuff. He happened to be the guy that trained all the ushers nationwide. And then I got, he said, well, you were in a pretty good church. I was, because it was the only one going at the time. They didn't know. They said, we're going to start a church. The person who started the church said, we're going to start a church. And 2,500 people showed up on the first Sunday. How would you like 25 people? 2,500 people show up, and you don't know. You got, who's our children? Who's our who? You got 120 babies. I mean, you, you got zero to whatever, zero, no, no, nine months, you got, I mean, it's not, you're doing a one year old, you're doing a two year old. I mean, you got, you're dividing and conquering. And it wasn't like we have where we have an hour and a half services or an hour service. There were three hour services. And then you came back and did it Sunday night for three hours. And then you did it Wednesday night for three hours. <laughs> See, y'all got nervous. Y'all just went, oh my God, we're going to And we're so spoiled nowadays. God bless all of you. We're so spoiled. Hallelujah. <laughs> And I don't say that to brag on me. I just said, they said, do it. So I said, oh, I thought that's what you're supposed to do. But because I was there, because I did, and because I got in connection, supernatural things took place. Yes. Hallelujah. You know, 30 some odd years later, we start our church here. And, you know, Willie George says, here, you can have all of our curriculum. You can have all this stuff. Because he's my friend. And everybody else is saying, hey, we'll give you all this, all this stuff. We're going to do this. We want to help. And all because I showed up on a Sunday morning and said, I'll help. <laughs> Amen. Were you called to it? I don't think so. I know I wasn't, I wasn't called to the nursery. I mean, I love babies. Love babies. I was doing good, but boy, howdy. You know. Amen. I found out what God's called me to do by just doing. Amen. Here, here in, in 1 Peter chapter 4, but this is the key for you guys. In 1 Peter chapter 4, you know, and I'm going to read it to you out of, out of the New King James here. It says, it says, above all things, hallelujah, this is verse 8, have fervent love one for another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Aren't you glad for the love of God? Amen. It says, be hospital one to another without grumbling. Next phrase says this, as each one has received a gift, every one of you has a gift to the body of Christ, amen? You need to minister or serve it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. And if anyone speaks, let him speak as an oracle of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as of the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever, Amen. Now, the very next verse says this, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened to you. Why did I add that on there? Because that's the next verse. Because any time that you want to exercise your gift, you're going to have a fiery trial. Somebody's going to get mad at who do you think you are. Or somebody's going to get mad that your gift doesn't coincide with their gift, or they're going to get frustrated in thinking, you should be doing this. You should, everybody should be involved in this. This is the greatest thing around. And I love people like that, because if you're not committed to your call, and if you're not excited about your call, nobody else is going to be. In the flyleaf of one of the first Bibles I have, it says this, it's not enough to answer the call. You've got to be committed to it. 
Because I answered the call of God on my life to do what God... But it wasn't enough to answer it. I had to stay committed because all of the enemies was going to come and try to talk me out of it and try to tell me that I couldn't do it. That who do you think you are? Amen? Now, you've heard the old joke that the pastors always resign on Monday because they did a terrible job on Sunday. <laughs> you know? And uh, we see all that. But, you know, the, the, the wonderful thing about it is when you realize what is Peter talking about here, as each one of us has received a gift. Amen? Now we go with me through it over to Romans chapter 12. What I want to share with you is, listen, we're not recruiting. We're not making. We can't make. We can't recruit. We can only ask. And God can only ask. You know, God doesn't recruit. Sorry, he doesn't. You're not in the army now, even though you should be in the army, but you're not in the army. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But uh, the Holy Spirit prompts us. The Holy Spirit leads us. He loves us. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Here in Romans chapter 12, verses 4 through 8 says this. For as we have many members in one body, but all members do not have the same function or the same office. So we, being many, are one body in Christ and individually, individually members one of another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Let us use them. You know, if you're prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or if ministry or serving, let us use it in our ministry or serving. And he who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, He who gives with liberality, he who leads, let him do it with diligence. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Now, we know that we've learned that those are the motivational gifts. We know that when you you talk about the, the nine spiritual gifts, we know that in Galatians, it's the nine fruit of the spirit. But did you know that all of the Bible was written for you and I? And all of us have giftings that we do. And don't despise the gifts that one another have. Hallelujah. Don't be like David's men. Remember when, you remember when David, the story of David in Zigzag, you know, David's out, he's, he got his men out there fighting. They come back home and all of a sudden they see the city burned. All of their wives, their kids, all of their lives, like everything is gone. They completely devastate the city. And, the, and his men says, we're going to kill you, David. And so David says, uh, time out. Let me go encourage myself in the Lord, the Bible says. I got because he's like, I mean, he lost all of his too, but he's, he said, and he gets to the priest. And he says, hey, let me see. He said, Lord, do I chase after him? Am I going to get it? He said, and the Lord said, yes, you're going to recover all. Go do it. Well, he had 600 men. And so they start to go. But 200 of them were just, they were so overcome, they were just wiped out. They said, we can't go. He, and David said, okay, you guys stay here by the stuff. You just stay here, relax, stay here by this part. You stay here. So 400 men went, and they went, and they defeated the army. They got everything back. And, but when they came back with all the spoils and everything else, and when they came back, they were all really excited to see the 200 that were there. But the 400 that went said, hey, they did, they're a bunch of wimps. They didn't come. They wimped out. They don't get anything. Just give them their wives. Give them their kids because we don't want them. <laughs> but they don't get anything else. And what did David say? No, 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 no. They that stayed by the stuff get the same as those that went. He said, let it not be so. He said, we're making, in fact, we're going to make a law and a decree. And that's what it was. Whoever stayed back to stay and to take care of what was going on here got the same as those that were going out, those that were going forward. See, because each one, we need each one in the body of Christ just to be who they are. You're unique in your own self. Amen. Amen. I never understood how some people get so mad if you don't, you don't jump in and jump on board with them. Y'all doing okay? <laughs> you know why? Because we got a lot more Gideons in the Bible or in the body of Christ, you know, than we do Pauls. <laughs> Amen. But yet, did you know I mean, Gideon had so much insecurity. He's like, I mean, the angel comes down and says, mighty man of valor. I mean, you got an angel. I mean, whoa, it's supernatural. Gideon's like, who? Who are you talking about? I'm hiding behind. I'm from from the lowest. I got the lowest family and the lowest tribe. That's what he said. He said, you know, 
Uh, we're in trouble. And then he turns around and says, where is God? That all of our ancestors talk about, where is this? You know, he said he was going to do all this. He said he was going to do all this stuff, you know, and God calls him. But didn't, isn't it amazing that God never, ever even answered Gideon on all of his complaints? Have you ever noticed in your life, God doesn't answer you according to your complaints? He only answers according to what you believe and what you can begin to, to ask him for. He only answers according to how, how much faith you have in him. Hallelujah. Just allowing God to be God. Amen. Because everybody usually thinks, yeah, but if I just do this, this is not real big or this is not real meaningful. Did you know that you yourself are the most meaningful thing to God? Somebody asked the question, says, well, what do I do? What if I'm called to this? Am I, I got to be called to something dramatic or sensational or something great big. Oh, I want to do this. I want to, you know, I'm going to do these things. No, no, no. God just called you to be you. See, I never understood that either. You know, I didn't understand uh, why people were always looking for something bigger and better than being a Christian. See, you've heard me tell the story. I mean, like people like, oh, you're one of those. Yes, I am, and I can't believe you're not. <laughs> you know, in every benefit, in every blessing of God, when people want to question on the Word of God, and they will say, you mean you believe this, you believe that? And I say, yeah, and I can't believe that you don't, but you know what? I still love you. But they're so mad because I don't believe their way. Amen. We see the hand of God. We see these things here. I mean, we see the insecurity of Gideon. We see Moses saying, I stutter. I'm, I already left there. I ain't going back. <laughs> Fair, I'm, who, who am I? Who am I going to say? Send me. You tell him I am sent you. Okay, that's not going to work. But uh, we'll do this. You know, amen. I mean, Jeremiah thought he was too young. Sarah thought she was too old. Peter said the first time he met Jesus, get away from me, I'm a sinful man. <laughs> and what did Peter do? I mean, what did Jesus do? Jesus filled his boat with fish. He's like, oh my God, this guy's, on, <laughs> I'm in trouble. You know, and Paul, Paul even said the same thing too. And he said, I, I, I'm the least of all saints because I persecuted the church. Do you know that nobody in the, in the, in the Bible felt adequate to do what God called them to do? And isn't that wonderful? Because God never calls you to do what you can do. God always calls you to do what he can do through you. Amen. See, because if you can do it, then just do it. Praise God. Honor God. You know, be, be, a good, you know, be a good child. Hallelujah. But God always wants you to step out and get out of your comfort zone in some areas just to be the blessing because he wants to touch your life. Amen. God's plan, God's purpose. He has a desire because God's called us with a holy calling. And you know that God's called us to, to have liberty? I mean, there's scripture in the Bible that it says in Galatians 5.13, it says, for you, brethren, have been called to liberty. But it goes on to say, only don't use your liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. You know, God called us to be connected to one another. And that's why Paul used the analogy of the body of Christ. You know, I'm so, we're so blessed at, our, at, you know, at, at Harvest Bible Church. Because just like, as Paul was talking about our men, you know, we had almost 50 guys at our men's breakfast this past month, and I'm believing we're going to have more than that in, in February, and just keep going, you know, because we've got a lot of great guys here. So ladies, I know you get bragged on, I know Paul's, and, and that's true, all the ladies, praise God, you did bring them here, and I'm so glad you brought them here so we can help them, okay? <laughs> Hallelujah, glory to God, amen. But that is a blessing. But we have got some awesome guys here. I mean, we have got a whole church full of leaders. I felt other pastors say, you know, you've got some really strong guys in your church. I said, I know. I know. I mean, they're, they're a whole bunch of rogues, man. They're tough. I love it. I love that they're all leaders. I love that they all challenge. You know, you never know what they're going to do. There are a lot of loose cannons, but it's awesome. <laughs> it's so good. Sometimes you don't even know what they're going to say or what they're going to do. Hallelujah. But it's so much fun. <laughs> Amen. Because none of the guys, none of these guys like to be told. <laughs> Ladies, just help you out there. They like to be asked, but they don't like to be told. 
Yeah, they come by that naturally. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> it is what it is. But I'm so glad because I've just, you know, I get called from pastors and I just want to brag on our guys. I want to brag on our church a little bit. You know, we're blessed. Yeah, they just got called this even this past week. You know, I don't want to do this. It seems like the guys aren't doing it. I said, well, not my church. He said, really? I said, oh, no, no. My, I said, I got guys come all the time. They're guys, they show up. He said, they're here. They love God. And yes, they, they need to be, and they need to grow and grow, and we got great guys here. So, so if you don't like strong guys, this is not a good church for you. But here, let me just share on the other side. We got a whole bunch of strong ladies, too. Whoa, baby. Hallelujah. So it's the only way we can handle it. You got both strong. It's like, wow. You know, someone says, how do you keep control? I don't. I just smile and we just, we maneuver things. We help out. It works out really good. We try not to make anybody mad. It's all good. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. You've got to have fun because y'all getting so nervous about being called to do something. But I, what I want you to get out of this whole thing today is that when, when, when people come and say, this is our heart of God, I really believe because it's something in their heart that they want to help and do. Same thing with Peter, same thing with Paul, same thing with anything that goes on. It's that you have a heart to see the hand of God, see lives being touched. But the biggest key is that you're called to be a Christian. You're called not to be common. Amen? You're called to do uncommon acts. You're called to be a light wherever you're at. You're called to let Jesus shine wherever you're at in everything you do because God wants to use you. Hallelujah. And what you do is not just simply, oh, no, glory to God, you're anointed and appointed to be where you're at. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Hallelujah. And if you'll do that, you'll touch so many lives. You'll touch so many more lives, and it'll change people's lives. Hallelujah. Amen? You know, have you ever heard this phrase in the Bible? Because it's a scripture in the Bible. It says, many are called, but few are chosen. People say, well, I don't know that I'm called to any specific thing. Then glory to God, shout hallelujah, Amen. I wish I wasn't called to any specific thing sometimes. I tried to talk the Lord out of it. Many, I said, Lord, don't call me to preach. Don't call me to be a pastor. Let me just work, and I'll be the biggest giver that it, there is. Just let me. I'm going to do this. Let me have my own business. Let me. I tried to convince him that for four years while I was in full-time ministry pastoring. <laughs> Amen. I did. He wouldn't let me. He said, nope, you got to quit everything and go for nothing. I said, just because we got to get some things out of you. <laughs> and he did. And I thank God for it. I'm having a blast. But you know what? All I did was prove the ministry and to prove what God said was true. Hallelujah. You know, there's a calling of every believer that we have. He's called us to be Christians. But what does it mean to be that? And I'm going to close on this and, or wind this thing down. Is that he's called us to be salt. Sometimes you gotta, you gotta be a little salty. You gotta stand your ground. You know, salt brings flavor to things, but salt also can sting. <laughs> Thank you for your overwhelming response on that one. Some of you might be a little too salty. You need to tone down a little bit. Because God's also called us to be light. Aren't you glad that you have the truth? Amen. Aren't you glad that you know the truth? If you've been born again, if you've made Jesus Christ the Lord of your, of your life and you know that you're going to make heaven, you've got light to give to everybody. You've got hope to give. Amen? We've got to do that. Because not only has he called us to be salt and to be light, but believe it or not, he's called us to be his ambassador where we're at. We're supposed to be his voice, his representative of what Jesus is like. You're supposed to be able to follow you as, as you follow Christ. Just like Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. We're supposed to be able to do that. You're supposed to, as we follow you, we're supposed to be able to see Jesus. Amen? I know that makes you all nervous too, but that's okay. It's either, because we're called to be a witness. We are called to be a witness. We are called to go. We, are, we may not be called, all called to go and to do, you know, things that we're uncomfortable in, in doing as what Peter was talking about. But we are all called to pray, and we are all called to witness to those that we come in contact with. Amen? Hallelujah. And do you know what? Do you know that you're really called to be a blessing? Turn to your neighbor. Say, no, don't turn to your neighbor. Don't, don't think I was going to say turn to your neighbor and tell them he, they need to work on that. But no, you need to, you need to do this. Is that No, you're called to be a blessing. Jeez, some of you be looking at your husband and wives and not good. We want you to have a good day. No fights. 
All right. But we are called to, all called to be a blessing. God's called us into those things. He's called us to touch lives. And believe it or not, we are all called to serve the Lord Jesus Christ with all of our hearts. And what that simply means is honoring God, knowing that, hey, I've been changed. I've been changed so that I can be a blessing, so I can touch lives. Amen? Do you know that God's only requirement of you is that you be obedient? You be faithful and obedient. If you'll be faithful and obedient to his calling, hallelujah, he'll be the one that does the results in your life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And whatever God's put in your heart, just be obedient to do it. Amen. There's no pressure. It's just being you and, and fulfilling and being a blessing. And then God will bring everybody in so that the vision can keep going and the vision can work. Amen. That's God's hand. That's God's plan. Hallelujah. He just wants you to speak faith. He wants you to believe that. Amen. He wants you to praise him, to worship. He wants you to be excited that he has his hand upon you. Amen. So he can move you and mold you and make you because God's not trying to get something from you. Hallelujah. He's trying to get something to you in everything of your life. I mean, we're just the believers. We're the receivers. We're the ones that are just honoring God. And God's the one that does everything. He's the performer. He's the one that brings things to pass. He's the one that changes. Amen? I want to read you a spiritual song that was given by the Holy Spirit in a meeting that I was in. And it's been the most impactful song in my life. Uh, in my whole life, it, it, you know, when I when I heard it, but, but it just it changed me, and it's one that I've constantly. I actually went back, listened to it, and, and actually wrote it all out. And I have it in many things. Had it in the flyleaf of my Bibles, different ones, uh, for many years, because it it transformed. When I, I was in the service, when it actually came forth by the Spirit of God, and uh, it was you know done, um, and it was a supernatural. Uh, song that was given, but I'm just going to read it to you because I'm not going to sing it because I don't even know the tune, okay? Aren't you guys blessed along that line? Hallelujah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, but this is, and it's basically called Your Plan. It says, Lord, your plan, your plan and not the plans of man. Your purpose is in your service is where we firmly stand. Pursuing, Lord, your perfect will, your plans and purpose to fulfill. And, Lord, will never stop until the day you come again. A foundation built on any other, Lord, we know it will not stand. And though it may be good, and though we think we could, unless the Lord builds the house, we know it will never stand. Your purpose, your purpose. In your holy service, I got to ask yourself, what is my motive and what is my intention and whose signature and image is displayed when I am finished? Can everyone see that it's not really me, but it's through God's divine intervention? So what are you pursuing and for whose glory are you doing? All the labor and the physical strain is it for God or is it for your own gain? Or does your spirit yearn for God to turn this world around for him? If your pursuit is his, you've found what happiness is. And the glory in your life will never grow dim. It's very anointed. It's a very good. It's even more anointed when it's sung. And uh, but. It's, uh, it's something that uh, I've lived my life by for the last 40 some odd years. Because the biggest thing is where I look at myself and say, hey, am I doing this for the Lord or am I doing this to get another feather in my cap? Am I doing this because I want everybody to see how great I am or do I want to do this because I want everybody to see how great God is? Amen. Am I doing this because I want God to turn this world around for him? You know, and if my pursuit is his, I want to make sure that I'm doing what he wants me to do because that's where the joy comes. That's where the peace comes. Knowing you're in the perfect will of God, doing what God desires for you to do. When I know I'm pursuing what is his, then truly I have found what happiness is. Amen. I truly have found. Hallelujah. And then, believe it or not, the glory in your life, it won't never grow dim. God's, God's grace, his mercy will never, never stop in your life. 
So God's called you to be you, but he's called you to be a Christian, and he's called you to be part of the body of Christ, and you've got to find your place in that, and then just get hooked up. What is your passion? What is your desire? And then live that life so that, hey, you're honoring God in it, and then the glory of God and the joy of the Lord. I really believe that. I believe that there needs to be joy. They need, the world needs to hear, man, the church. Why are these crazy Christians so happy? Why are they so full of joy? I mean, they live in the same world we live in. Yeah, we do, but we're not of it. We may be in it, but we're not of it. And we don't partake of the spirit of the world. Hallelujah. Our joy is not found here. Our joy is found there. Our joy is in the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. See, we find out what is, why? Because we're walking in line with what his word says. And God has a calling. And callings are calling. Callings are calling. They're calling. What do I mean by that? Is that God's ordering your steps. You may have stopped one thing, but that means he has something else for you to do. Amen. He always has. There's, no matter how old, no matter how, even if you're with those old people like me that are 65 and going to be there, you got to do that. You can still do things, okay? Hallelujah. One of those old folks, we can handle it. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor you. Oh, how we love you and how we praise you, Lord. Father, we just thank you for your heart. We thank you for your testimonies today. Thank you, Father God, for your goodness and your grace. But most of all, we thank you for Jesus. Father, your plan is what we desire. Your purpose is what we desire. We honor you today. Father, we have our heads bowed, and all that is is that we just want to think about what you've spoken to us this morning, receive it in there and kickle, but also, Father, we want to look on the inside of us, because, Father, I don't know everybody that's here. I don't know their hearts, but you do. You know their hearts. You know where they're at. You know what they need, and my heart right now is, is that, Holy Spirit, you would move, and you would touch their lives. Because if you're here and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or you've never accepted him, you've never received him, hallelujah, or you may have, but you've fallen away and you needed to come back, you need to come back home, hallelujah, or you just needed, you know, in your heart, you said, I just need to to rededicate my life or just to recommit my life, need to Let Jesus know, I'm here. You can use me. God loves you. He loves you so much. And I'm not asking you to join this church. I'm asking you to join the church if you've never been born again. Because that's how you do it. You get a part of the body of Christ is just accepting Jesus. And all that is, is Romans said, if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, you shall be saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so I want to pray. And so if you need to come back to the Lord or you need to come to the Lord for the very first time, just raise your hand. Or you just need to say, just pray. I just need, I need to recommit my life. Just raise your hand real high. We're just going to pray together. Just raise your hand. Had a, yeah, when you're raising your hand, you're just acknowledging, God, yeah, that's me. God, you've been messing with my heart. That's me. Hallelujah. Because see, God said you're supposed to, you're supposed to acknowledge him. When you acknowledge him, he'll run to you. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for this amazing crowd this morning. Thank you for these amazing folks. Thank you for touching their lives. Father, you divinely appointed them to be here today. You had a divine appointment for them to know that they are called. They're called to be Christians. They're called to be saints. They're called to be children of God. They're called, Father, to serve in the body of Christ and to be a blessing. And they're called to serve where they're at and their, whatever they're doing in their life. Father, so that lives can be touched by those around them. Father, thank you that you've called us into the kingdom for such a time as this. This is our hour. This is the finest hour of the church because we get to bring back the king and we get to show the world which is in chaos what peace is like, what joy is like, what freedom is really like. Lord, we honor you for that, and I thank you for it, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Father, for it. Lord, as as they go from this place, they're going out into a mission field. They're going back into their jobs. They're going back into the schools. They're going back to wherever they're at. Hallelujah. Father, your hand upon them. 
Let them be a shining light. They're called to be the salt of the earth. They're called to be the light to the world. Father, thank you for it. Father, thank you for that. And Lord, I just thank you that they're going to be able to give an answer to everyone that asks the reason of the hope that is within them. Hallelujah. They're ready. Thank you, Father, that we're going to go to the highways and the byways. Hallelujah. And we're going to compel people to come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, that we're going to study the Word of God. We're going to study to show ourselves approved, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. Father, we honor you for that. We love you for it now. And I just thank you, Father, for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.